I can't get enough. Amen. Well, I tell you, it's a real privilege to be here with you all, right here in my living room. And uh, this is my new residence. I like this place. I might camp out here for a while. It's pretty nice here, isn't it? It's great. I'm from San Diego, California, uh, way on the other side of this great continent of ours. And uh, I'm a church planner. I've been planning a church now for the last six or eight months. And it's exciting to see what God is doing. And that's why I like to sing, Look What God Is Doing, because I think when we yield our lives to Him and when we, we give our hearts to Him and, and service, uh, God can use us in remarkable ways. Amen? I don't think God ever wastes any of us. He uses us, and even sometimes it might be the smallest little way, but it's significant in the kingdom's economy. Amen? Amen. Well, a couple of years ago, I had a heart attack, and it was something I wasn't expecting. I was leading worship in church, and all of a sudden, I felt like I couldn't get through the song, and at the end of the song, I said to the worship team, I said, boy, I feel like I just had a heart attack, and I was joking. And it turned out I had had a heart attack, and they, my, my wife rushed me to the hospital. And, well, we stopped at my home on the way to drop off my guitar, and uh, which everybody says was totally ridiculous for me to do that. But we stopped, put the baby to rest in, in the closet, and then we took off to the hospital. And, and I kind of entered the hospital on my knees. I was in such pain. And uh, finally got assigned to a doctor, and they were rushing me down to the ER unit, and they were going to do some procedures for me. And, and I'll never forget that the doctor stopped halfway in the hallway when I was being rolled on this stretcher. And he, my wife was standing there, and he said, uh, you might want to kiss your wife. And I thought, ooh, that sounds scary. And I, so not kissing my wife, but just <laughs> what was going to happen. And, and, uh, and so I gave my wife a big old kiss, and, and then he took off. And I remember him saying to the, to the staff guys, the nurses who were helping us, uh, rush, let's get there quick. I thought, oh, boy. So I, I looked up at him, and I said, is everything going to be okay? And he smiled at me, and he said, you're going to be just fine. And it was as if the Lord himself kind of spoke through that doctor, that surgeon. And when I got into the room and they were doing the procedure, I just felt the real peace of God. And just knowing that whether I lived or I died, I was going to be okay. I was going to be just fine because I was in his hands. And uh, it reminded me of a song I wrote many, many years ago called He Will Carry You. And I'm convinced that if Jesus could carry the weight of the world upon his shoulder, then no matter what you and I face in life, we can take great comfort and encouragement in knowing that he will carry us. He will carry us. Amen. cannot solve it There is no mountain to talk He cannot move it There is no storm too dark God cannot calm it There is no sorrow to Show 
my sister that he will carry you he said come cannot solve it. Amen. There is no mountain too tall. He cannot move it. There is no storm too dark. God cannot calm it. There is no sorrow too he cannot soothe it. If he carried the weight of the world upon his shoulders, I know my brother that he will carry you. If he carried the weight of the world upon Obviously, I'm still around, and God decided to keep me on this side of uh, eternity, and uh, I'm thankful for that and for the, 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 the great lessons I learned in that whole journey of, of having a heart attack. And I think all of us face different trials and tribulations in our lives, but we know that God is in control, that God is sovereign, and that is one of the greatest comforts that I know of uh, that his providence uh, sees us through, it carries us through. The Lord carries us on his shoulders, just like that old, that old uh, poem, Footprints in the Sand, remember that? Where there's two sets of footprints and the fellow is saying that he was walking with the Lord and then all of a sudden there's one set of footprints and he says, Lord, where were you? And Jesus says, my son, that was when I, I carried you. And uh, that was actually the inspiration be behind that old song. I, uh, many years ago, was asked to sing the Lord's Prayer in church, and I froze. I, you know, it's such a big, powerful song, and, uh, and I just, it was me and my guitar, and I thought, how am I going to pull this off? So what I decided to do is write my own version of it and uh, simplify it a little bit, but nevertheless, the same wonderful words that the Lord has taught us to pray. And so why don't we just, as I sing this, Maybe close your eyes and pray with me a little bit. Then we just invite God's presence in and uh, call upon his name. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name.
Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day. Daily bread and forgive us all trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom. Son, you are here by my side. You are more than a dream come true. Whoa, to have you, to hold you, to love you, to pray, to share with, to care with, to hold hands and say.
sung that for quite a while. That is a song I wrote for my bride, uh, Belinda, and uh, we have just celebrated our 38th wedding anniversary. And I wrote that. We Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I wrote that uh, after we got married. I was uh, trying to come up with a song for our wedding, but I was so emotional. I just couldn't come up with something. And uh, I, I don't know what I sang in our wedding, but, but that came about a year later. And, uh, and, I, and I've learned a lot of things about marriage. Uh, for one is uh, that you can marry as a Christian 16 different people. Did you know that? Yeah, four better, four worse, four rich, and four poor. That equals 16. Okay, so much for the joking around. I just can tell you that that, that went over like a lead balloon. <clears throat> but I'm so thankful that uh, God gave me my bride, and she has faithfully traveled with me as we've gone all around the world, about 50 different countries, and uh, we've just seen God's marvelous works among the nations and all of the exciting things that are taking place as God's people, as the church, are faithful, and they go forth into the nations to disciple them, to plant the church. And, you know, I, I always come back to Africa because I think in Africa is where God taught me so many different things about my faith, about myself. And I'll never forget the, the first day that I had arrived out in the bush. I was over there with an organization called the Jesus Film. And we were going to show this Jesus movie that was just newly translated into Swahili. But as we pulled into the village, I was with a missionary named John. And we got out of our little Jeep thing. And, and uh, this man, this African man, was hobbling toward us. He had a stick. He was kind of pushing himself forward. And uh, his wife was, was with him, and she was coming. And, and I remember as they got up close to us, he, he, he said to John, he says, Brother John, I have an announcement to make. And, and John says, yes, Jackson. They called him Jackson. And, and, and Jackson looked at John, and he says, I think I love my wife. <laughs> Isn't that funny? And I just kind of chuckled. I thought, well, that's, that's a funny thing to say. I think I love my wife. But if you understand the culture where wives are purchased, they're, they're considered property. And, and, and Jackson had bought his wife. He traded some stuff for her. And her main job was to keep the hut clean, to prepare the meals, bear the children, and all of that. And Jackson had these great and glorious plans to, to buy several wives, as they do in that culture. And he gave his life to Jesus Christ. And, and the reason he wanted to buy many wives uh, was because in his village, the more wives you have, the higher the, you know, your stature is among the people. And he couldn't herd cattle because he'd had a problem with his leg. And he used this little stick to kind of propel himself forward. And so the only way he could prove himself as a man was to, to obtain more wives. And when he became a Christian, the, 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 the fellowship there had to tell him, Jackson, we love you, but you can only have one wife. And if you can imagine how that rubbed across the grain of, of his culture and his understanding of what, what was he going to do? You know, here he is, he's unable to, to herd the cattle. Uh, he can't climb mountains and hunt lions, but he can have a lot of wives. And now all of a sudden this is taken away from him. And then, number two, they said, and Jackson, not only can you have just one wife, but you have to love her. And that must have been a real shocker to him. I have to love my wife. But Jackson, having come to Christ and, and, and that transformation that the Holy Spirit does, he was convicted and he prayed that God would help him to love his life, so his wife. So when when he we pulled up and he made that announcement, it was so significant uh, of an announcement that God had indeed done that transformation. And Jackson loved his wife. And what a witness that would be to the rest of the people in his community that here's a man that loves his wife and lays himself down for her as Christ laid himself down for his bride for the church. And, and that was one of the first lessons I learned in Africa. I saw the transformation of God's power. Um, when it can go into any kind of a culture and make it from what, whatever culture it is to a kingdom culture. We have a different culture as God's people. And that's what we do when we disciple the nations. And the guys didn't, you know, hit Jackson over the head with a baseball bat. They just simply prayed, God changed his heart, and God did change his heart. And I remember later on that night, we set up the Jesus film, and we... We watched it with about uh, five or 600 people. It was in the dark. We had a generator going, and people were just so attached to this movie. They'd never seen a movie before, and they'd never really heard the gospel. 
And so here in their own language, Swahili, they're hearing the gospel as, as portrayed by the actors and the actresses on this film. And I had made so many excuses about not going to Africa because I was afraid of things like, you know, you know, natives with spears and lions, and I was afraid of bugs, and, you know, and the bugs over there are pretty big. I don't know about you, but when bugs have lips, they're big, you know, and so, and, and so here we are, we're watching this film, it gets to the end of the film, and uh, Jackson got up on a little box that they had set up out there in the bush, and a bunch of us took our flashlights, and we pointed them in his direction, and he gave an in invitation and he said, how many of you wish to give this king of kings, the true lion king, how many of you want to give your hearts to Jesus tonight? And we saw hundreds of these Maasai warriors lifting their spears into the sky in unison. It was kind of like this big whoosh. And I was just overcome with, with joy and conviction at the same time. Of, I was thinking of all the excuses I had made uh, about not going to Africa or not going here, or God, I'll do this if you don't send me there, and I promise you I'll give you this if you don't make me do that, you know, and we kind of negotiate with God. <laughs> it's kind of a crazy notion, but we all do it one way or the other, and here I was witnessing God's power of salvation among these people who had never heard of Jesus up until that very moment that we turned on that projector. And in and, and one week, we saw 5,329 or so people give their hearts to Jesus Christ. It was a powerful moment, a powerful time for us. And, and I'll never forget, as all those Maasai warriors were holding their spear tips into the sky in unison, uh, they all went up together, and, and I looked, and there was this multitude of stars. And these, these spear tips were kind of silhouetted against the twilight of the southern Kenyan sky. And I looked, and I saw this multitude of stars, and I thought, Oh, whoa. Remember God's promise to Abraham and your descendants shall be as what? The stars of the skies. And I was seeing that fulfilled before my eyes. And here now these new brothers and sisters were part of our family. And I was so excited. And God really did major transformation in my heart. It was then that I really committed myself to going to the nations and singing in as many different countries and in many different cultures. Uh, God opened the doors for us a few years ago to go to Saudi Arabia. I mean, just doors have opened to go into so many unique places around the world where God is planting the church. may not be a known big time public, all of this, but there's a church. And God has a people. And uh, that's the exciting thing about world evangelization is we get to be a part of it. We get to participate in it. Amen? So you guys can understand a little bit where I've come from. I've kind of taken those crazy promises and prayers that I used to uh, pray to the Lord and converted them into a song. So it, it goes like this. Listen, listen to this. <laughs> you have to kind of imagine you're out in the bush. You're in the depths of the jungle, right? Lions and tigers and bears, oh my. <laughs> you can even make some noises. Give me some jungle noises. Some of you get at that? Yeah, there's a good one out there. I like that. <laughs> oh, this could be a dangerous song. <laughs> oh Lord, I am your willing servant. You know that I have been four years. I'm here in this pew. Every Sunday and Wednesday, I've stained it with many a tear. I've given you years of my service, and I've always given my best. And I never ask you for anything much. So, Lord, I deserve this request please don't send me to africa i don't think i've got what it takes i'm just a man i'm not a tarzan don't like lions gorillas or snakes i'll serve you here in suburbia in my comfortable middle class life but please don't send me out into the bush where the natives are restless at night. Let me hear the jungle again. Come on. <laughs> I'll see that the money is gathered 
And I'll see that the money is sent. I'll wash and stack the communion cups. <laughs> I'll tie eleven percent. I'll volunteer for the nursery, and I'll go on the youth group retreat. I'll usher. I'll deacon. I'll go door to door. Just let me keep warming this seat. But please don't send me to Africa. I don't think I've got what it takes. Help me out. I'm just a man. I'm not a Tarzan. Though like lions, gorillas are snakes. I'll serve you here in suburbia in my comfortable middle class life. But please don't send me out into the bush where the natives are restless at night. Everybody now. Please don't send me to Africa. I don't think I've got what it takes. I'm just a man. I'm not a Tarzan. Though like lions, gorillas, or snakes. I'll serve you here in suburbia in my comfortable middle class life. But please don't send me to the ends of the earth where the natives are restless at night. Oh, Lord, send her, send him, not me. No! Well, the Lord ignored my prayer, and he sent me over to Africa 12 times, 12 times. And I've learned something about prayer, and that is we've got to be really careful what we pray. I'm serious. So I've been working on a whole new prayer. Please don't send me to Hawaii. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. And uh, he did answer that. He, he sent me over to Hawaii. We just were over there a few weeks ago. And God is doing a great work there on the islands. And I actually had hula dancers while I was leading worship. And uh, tried to convince them to come back to the U.S., the, the, the main, main part of the states with me, and, and, and dance in my church. But no, we'll stay here in Hawaii. Wonder why. <laughs> but anyway, just to see God's power demonstrated uh, all around the world is such an incredible thing. And to think that when God came to earth, he came so humbly as a little child born in a manger in a very insignificant town. He didn't come with all the pomp and the circumstance and the parades, the music, just humbly in a, in a stable or in a cave. Who would have thought this little child was born the king of kings and would change everything. Who would have thought that long ago so very far away a little child would be born in a manger laid and who would have thought this little child was born the king of kings the son of just a carpenter yet for whom the angels sing and who would have thought that as he grew and with other children played, this child with whom they laughed and sang would die for them someday. And who would have thought this little child could make a blind man see, feed the hungry, 
make rich the poor and set the prisoner free. Oh, who would have thought this little child was who the prophet said could take away the sin of man and rise up from the dead. And I Many years have come and gone, yet this world remains the same. Empires have been built and fallen, only time has made a change. Nation against nation, brother against brother, men so filled with hatred still killing one another and over half the world is starving while our banner of decency is torn debating over disarmament while killing children before they're born and fools who march to win the right to justify their sin that has fallen has fallen from within yet in the midst of this darkness there is a hope a light that burns this little child the king of kings someday will return This little child is who the prophet said will return to judge this world, the living and the dead. Oh, can't you see that long ago, so very far away, that Jesus Christ, our only hope, was born? Let us go forth in the grace of the Lord that strengthens us, sends us forth. only by his grace. 
which God supplies, strength the known He will provide. Christ in us, a cornerstone, we will go forth in grace alone. Once empty hearts singing one accord here in the house of the Lord. Here in the house of the Lord. Broken lives are restored. Once empty heart singing one. Son and Holy Spirit, we adore. He is awesome, He is great. There's forgiveness in His name. We rejoice in the house of the Lord. We rejoice in the house of the Lord. Here in the house of Broken lives are restored. 
once empty heart singing one accord here in the house of the Lord. There is love, there is grace, as His presence fills this place by the Son and Holy Spirit. forgiveness in his name we rejoice in the house of the Lord we rejoice in the house of the Lord honor power glory are yours honor power glory are yours honor Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we adore. You are awesome, you are great. There's forgiveness in your name. We rejoice in the house of the Lord. There is love, there is grace, as your presence fills this place. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we adore. You are awesome, you are great. There's forgiveness in your name. We rejoice in the house of the Lord. We rejoice in the house of the Lord. We rejoice in the house of the Lord. Amen. Thank you so much. It has been a real privilege to have been here uh, tonight um, and to gather together in his presence because wherever God's people are gathered together, we're in the house of the Lord. We are the body of Christ. We're brothers and sisters. No matter where I go in the world, when I'm with fellow believers, I'm at home. Amen. So we're at home tonight and uh, it has been an awesome time together. I hope you feel like God has been honored and you've been edified. We're going to close with one final song called We Are the Body of Christ. It's very easy to sing along. So let's sing it together and lift our hearts to Jesus. One heart one spear, one voice to praise you. We are the body of Christ. One goal, one vision to see.
Let's pray. God, we just thank you that uh, you are an awesome God, and you are worthy to be proclaimed to the ends of the earth, God, and that you, you give us the grace and the calling to go, to be your servants, Father. And even if it's not across the sea, Father, it's certainly across the street. And uh, I pray for the church here and our wonderful nation, God, that you would raise her up as a faithful, as a faithful servant, God, of your kingdom your love and your grace. And we thank you for this evening together. And all of God's people said, give me a big one, a real big amen here. Great. Thank you guys so much. Let's give the Lord a clap. It's been great to be here, a part of Cornerstone. It's been fun singing the old songs. God bless you. Stone Television wishes to thank all our faithful viewers whose consistent prayers and financial support have made this program possible.